Hi, 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 guys. My name is Bernie Bloom, CEO and founder of Ansel. Glad you're here tonight with me um, watching this video. And this time it's all about the API. So you know Ansel's Antman, our super easy and simple cloud management tool. So you can easily spin up and tear down your environments, um, both VMs and bare metal containers, by the way. And um, we have a full-blown API. It's powered by Swagger, so you can explore it on, on your own. It's compatible with Terraform, so you can automate everything. And I'm proud to have uh, Mark uh, with me here today. And Mark is going to guide you through the API and is going to give you an overview and show you everything on the screen. And uh, be sure to watch the video all through the end because in the end, it's going to be about Terraform, and that's the most important part. Um, our API is open API compatible, compatible. so please watch it um, to the end. And don't forget to give us the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's so important to us, so please help. And um, Mark? Hey, guys. Welcome back to a new video. Today, let's take a look at the Antman REST API and how you may want to utilize it to deal with more complex and automated workflows. Very first in the beginning, let's just take a look at what an API actually is. So the abbreviation API stands for Application Programming Interface, which is basically just a fancy word uh, for a regular interface. It allows you to control all the admin services and basically all the entire Ansel um, with that interface by simply making HTTP requests. If you don't know what that means right now, that's fine. We're going to take a look at it in more detail. So just as a test setup, I have an Ansel Nano here that's currently, um, where it currently has four antlets, but none of them is running. The goal for today's video is to start the antlets, stop the antlets, create a new antlet, and delete one antlet. And yeah, you might want to say, okay, that's super easy. Just click the start button or the delete button. But the challenge is going to be, we're not going to be using the admin interface, but we'll use the REST API instead. So how do you get started with the REST API? That's actually a pretty good question. We have something that's called Swagger UI. It's effectively a documentation and an interactive tool to kind of get your feet wet with the admin REST API. You can use it right now by simply going to your Ansel's IP address and then appending the Swagger-UI and there you have it. So the first thing you see right here is the different sections. You have an authentication section, an aid section, applet section, snapshot section, and so on and so forth. What these do is they basically group all the functionality related to one topic. And when you click on, for example, the applet section, you see all the endpoints that you can perform um, or that perform actions related to the applets. So that's pretty colorful and at the first glance might be a bit overwhelming. So let's start simple. We have four different types of requests. We have get requests, which basically just retrieve data from the server and don't do anything except basically putting the data out. We have post requests, which usually take parameters of some sort and perform a specific action on the server, like creating a new answer, for example. Then we have delete requests, which might, as you might have guessed it, um, simply delete a specific resource, in this case, an antlet with the specific antlet name. And then there is those put requests, and those are actually used for updating something. So here, for example, in this very specific put request, we have an antlet name, and we have our updated parameters that can be, for example, more CPU cores or more RAM that we basically just update the antlet with. So now you may see, okay, well, that's great, but how can I make sure that only I am able to perform all these actions and not someone else? For that, we actually have the authentication section, since your data is obviously very important and you want to make, or you want to be very sure who has access and who doesn't. So right now, if we just expand one section and click the try it out button, you get a 403, which is basically just forbidden or connection, um, or well, forbidden or not allowed. So that went pretty fast. Let's take a step back. Let's look at the interface first. 
So when expanding the endpoint, for example, this get endless endpoint, we can see first the response class. This is what we expect the server to return when we actually make the request. So in this case, I have an array, which are those, which is indicated by those curly brackets, uh, those, sorry, those squared brackets, and I have an object, which is indicated by those curly brackets, which means that I basically have an array of antlet objects. So each antlet object has different properties, like the description, the antlet number, the IP, and so on and so forth. Again, you can find a full exhaustive list and the exact same interface on your antlet right now. Or, sorry, on your Ansel right now. So, for now, let's continue and go down a bit. Here you have the response messages. And that's actually one response message that we were anticipating if no JWT is provided. Now you might be asking, what the hell is JWT? The JWT is actually what we use for authentication. It's short for JSON Web Token and is what we basically need to pass along with every request we make. Going further down a bit, we have the curl request. So you could use this one right now in a terminal um, and perform that request with curl and get the exact same output right here. Then we have the request URL, which is your Ansel's IP address and then the endpoint slash API slash endless and then response code. Since we didn't pass JWT along, we we're obviously not authorized to make this request, so the server responded with a 403. Let's look at how we can actually authorize or authenticate ourselves to make sure we get the right response that we expect from the server. For, to do that, we close up this one right here and go back into the authentication section at the very top. And there you see the very first one is API slash login. To understand what it actually does, we have a very short description here, which is super helpful for just looking at the different endpoints. In our case, it returns a JWT to use as authentication. So this is exactly what we want. So we just click on this right here. We see now a value parameter. Since this is a post request, we actually need to provide some data for the server to do something. In this case, authenticate us. So what we need for authentication is a username, obviously, and our password. I can simply click on this object right here, and it will automatically be copied over to our value field. In my case, the username is root, and the password is Ansel. Nope, we don't want to correct that. Um, in your environment, please make sure that you're either in a local network or using some sort of encryption, since all that data is sent from your browser to your Ansel. And if you're not using any encryption, anyone could technically read the data. So we passed over the body here, and we expect either um, our JWT or some 400 request with an error that contains a message to give us some more detailed information about what went wrong. So let's just try it out and see what happens. Now you can see I actually got a successful request, so 200 means the request went through successful, and I actually have a response body that looks way more like what we actually can work with. So here we have a token, and this is basically our JWT token, which we will need to use for all other authentication. In addition to the token, we also get the version of Ant-Man and the host name. Sorry, I did not want that to happen. Okay, let's just make a cut here and back up a bit. So now, the response body here delivers us a token, a version, and a host name. The token is actually what we need for further authentication. So I just copy this out up until the very end, press Command C for copy, and then I scroll up to the very top. And up here in the nav bar, you can kind of see an authorize button. When I click that, I'm able to authenticate for all requests on that page. In order to do that, I just need to type the word token to make sure it's a JWT, press one space, and then command V for paste, and paste in my token. So when I now click authorize, it quickly refreshes the window, and it's now using the JWT I just obtained for all other requests. To make sure it actually worked, let's go back into antlets and take another look at the get request. If I now click try it out, and now it's working. So you see, the server again responded with a 200 since I now authorized, and it returned exactly what it advertised. 
So I have an array and I have an object or basically an array of objects. So I can see the description, I can see the antlet number, the IP, and all the other information that is related to the antlet. So now we covered the get request. This is useful for obtaining all types of data. And we can do the same thing, for example, snapshots, or we could do that for templates, or we could do that for VLANs, port mirroring, all the features that you are able to control in Antman, you can also control over the Antman API. And that's really the key here. If you have some more advanced setup that requires you to automate things or requires you to run a very specific um, order of things, you can completely automate that with all of these um, API requests. Now let's take a look at starting an applet. For that, we just use another post request which would be the API antlets, antlet name, start request. As we saw earlier here, all antlets are currently not running. So if I want to start GitLab, I mean, of course, I could press the start button, but let's use the Antman API for that. If I go back into my response here, or sorry, if in, in my endpoint here, I can see the response class, which will be a success value, which might either be true or false. If the success is false, I'm getting an array of errors, which is exactly telling me what went wrong, and I'm getting a message. So all I need to provide is the name of the antlet, and then I can hit try it out. Let's go with GitLab for now. Hit the try it out button, and after Antman does its magic, it returns us exactly uh, what we want to see. So here, the response body was success true, the message is starting GitLab, and the response code again is 200. So everything we wanted to see. Let's check quickly back into admin and see if something changed. And indeed, there you have it. GitLab is now running. So how about we try and delete an antlet for now? So I actually saw, OK, well, I'm not using OpenVPN at the moment. Let's just try and delete that one right now. For this, we simply go back into the antlet section and go to the delete operation right here. This, again, um, asks me for the antlet name and then tells me what the possible responses might be. So the 204 would be successful operation. Since I just deleted the antlet, there's nothing I can return. 400 would trigger a bad request, which might be either that the antlet does not exist or, for example, it's not stopped yet. And 403 would be not authorized, which then again means that I'm either trying to attempt this request without a JWT or it's simply invalid. So let's try and enter the antlet name here, OpenVPN, and click on try it out. This will perform a delete request and the response body, as we expected, is no content since the antlet got deleted and the response code is 204. If we now head back into admin here, I can actually see that the antlet just disappeared from my list. And that's really all it is. We're performing actions that we would usually use buttons for on the antman interface. And since we're making those requests, we can implement them in any workflow we want. Um, we now covered listing all antlets. We now covered um, starting and stopping an antlet and we just deleted the antlet. Another very useful feature is obviously creating antlets. For that, we want to kind of take a look at the payload we need, to, um, we need to supply, since this is a bit more complicated. But let's just walk through it very slowly. First, we have a response class, which is effectively the object that we expect to, the server to return. This will be the antlet we just created. As parameters, what we need to give the server is basically the specs. So we have an example value that tells us what antlets we may want or what um, meta information we want to use to create the antlet. This is a lot. Don't worry, we, need, we don't need everything. Um, actually, the only things we really need to supply is the name, the template, and the um, performance settings like RAM, CPU, and the compression, and then of course where we actually want to create it and the antlet number, or rather the IP address. So first, let's look at the template I created here. 
This is something I drew up earlier, and it's basically just an object. You can see that based on those uh, curly brackets. And we have all the keys that we need for the entity to start, or for the entity to be created. This is the entity number, that's the name, the template, the compression, the RAM, and the CPU. So all I need to do here is basically copy that out, paste it in here, and then try it out. Again, let's take a look at the response messages first. So worst thing that could happen is a 400 error, which means that we either missed something or we have a key that is not um, in the list, or it might also be that, for example, we have a duplicate entity number or a uh, name. So in this case, everything looks good. If I go back into admin here, I don't have the IP address 14 yet, I don't have the name, and the template is also available. So let's just click try it out and see what happens. Here, go back into that file and convert it to a plain text. Save. Okay. So we just covered getting data from uh, Ant-Man, which we tried in form of retrieving the antlets. We covered how you start an antlet. The same applies to stopping, pausing, and resuming an antlet, and also how to delete an antlet. The only thing left to do is to look at how we can actually create a new antlet. And for that, I utilize the post request. This one right here looks like a lot, but don't worry, we're going to look at it in uh, step by step. First, we have the response class. The response class is what we expect the server to return. Um, in this case, it would, it would ideally be the antlet we just created. The parameters are what we need to supply the server, uh, basically the information the server needs to create the antlet from. And then we have the response. The response can either be the successful response, which would be the status 201, or it might be some failure, which could either be a 400. In that case, we might have either have a duplicate key in there, or we are missing a key, or the antlet already exists, or we have a 403, as we covered before. That's just simply an authentication issue. So since we don't really want to go through all of these properties, I just create the bare minimum um, as a text file here that we need to actually cover all the basics. In that case, let's just take a look at this right here. Let me move the screen a bit over um, and look at the parameters we need to actually create the input. Again, we want to start with an object. So we're starting with the curly brackets. And then we need to provide the input number. I'm just going to copy that over since it's, it'll be faster and make sure that I'm using the proper coding on these and don't have any character issues later. All right, now with our payload in there, let's just try out the request. So we can see here, admin is working. Okay, well, as you can see by this very quick video here, I actually have the complete ability to control every feature of Ant-Man by using the REST API. In the later videos, we're going to look at how to actually implement that in a custom workflow by creating a script that will create a, um, a snapshot for every antlet that is running on the server. And another thing I just want to kind of hint is Terraform. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Terraform. If you're not, you probably want to check out their website, but it's basically allowing you to use infrastructure or to define infrastructure as code. And Antman, or specifically the Antman API, is also compatible with Terraform. So we're going to look at that in a later video as well. Until then, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. All right, Mark, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Um, that gave us a great overview. Um, we are planning more videos about the API, some deep dives about several of the sections that you saw today. Um, please leave us a comment down below what part of the API you're especially interested in that we can show you that hands-on and give you some more information about. So that would be just awesome. Again, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. See you guys soon. Bye.